This is Math 152, and we're going to do the second part of Section 1.4 about net change. And I just want to remind you um, that we've talked about it a couple times, that if I have uh, some integral uh, from A to B of the derivative of some function relative to uh, X, that is the same as evaluating that net change in the just a reminder. So let's, uh, we're going to do two different things here. We're going to uh, work a little bit on average value, and we're also going to um, do some application with this. So here's a situation. So here is the situation. A ball is thrown upward from a height of 3.2 meters with an initial speed of 35 meters per second. Uh, acceleration due to gravity, gravity is 90, uh, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, right? That's an acceleration, meters per second per second. And it's negative because it's pulling downward uh, against the height. So with this information, we want to find an equation for the velocity at time t and the height at time t. So as we think about this, let's remember that if I have um, displacement or height relative to time, if I take the derivative of that relative to time, I get the velocity. And if I take the derivative of that relative to time, I get the acceleration, right? Second derivative and first derivative relative to t. Now that means going the opposite direction. If I integrate going this way, if I integrate the acceleration, it should tell me something about the velocity, at least the um, indefinite. And then if I do it again, it should tell me something about the displacement. Right, so derivative this direction, um, antiderivative or integral this direction. So let's think about that then. One thing we know is the acceleration. Acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8. So I know that the acceleration at some given time, actually the whole time, is negative 9.8. Acceleration, that gravity is a constant pull. It's not speeding up. Um, so we've got that. So now if I want to know the velocity, I should be able to take the integral of the acceleration. Like I know that this is true relative to t. So the integral at, of negative 9.8 relative to t is, uh, well, negative 9.8t plus some constant. So the question is, what's that constant? Well, I have some information up here. I know the initial speed, in other words, the velocity at time zero is 35. In other words, when t is 0, um, this thing has to equal 35. So notice I could do that with anything. If it told me what the speed was a second into it, this would be v of 1 equals whatever that speed is, and I could substitute it in. But in this case, it's 0, so I know that uh, negative 9.8 times 0 plus c must be that velocity of 35. So c is 35. So now I have an equation for that velocity. Okay, so now let's get to the height. Well, similarly, that height or the displacement is going to be the integral relative to relative to t of the velocity. And so I have this. So I'm going to take that integral. If you've taken a physics class, this should be somewhat familiar to you. Maybe not the calculus piece, but where we're going to end up. So this is an indefinite um, integral. So that, let's see, half of negative 9.8 t squared plus 35t plus some c value. And what's great is, again, I have some more information. Um, a ball is thrown upward from a height of 3.2. This is telling me uh, the height at time 0 is 3.2. So t is zero. That's convenient. It, it, this could be different information. It could tell me three seconds in, it's at a height of whatever. And then this would be a three, so t would be three, or, or whatever that number was. But in this case, it's zero. So that means that negative 4.9 times zero plus 35 times zero plus c equals that initial height of 32. So c is 32. I'm sorry, 3.2. So that gives me an equation for that height, 35t plus 3.2. And then I've come up with those. So notice what I was able to do. I started with that acceleration. 
Um, and I had some initial conditions as well, or some additional conditions. You know, I knew something about when the velocity was a certain value, something about when the height was a certain value. Um, took that integral, got the velocity, took the integral of that, figured out that height. This connection that we did with with all these, it, it's kind of it's an important connection. This velocity was in meters per second, and so notice that this was in meters. And we derived it relative to time, so it became meters per second. Derive that relative to time again, we get meters second squared, right? Meters per second per second, which is an acceleration. It's kind of interesting. Let's say I had this, this middle function um, that I'll just call f, and it is in miles per gallon. So that would be like a, a fuel efficiency, right? Or a um, you know, your MPG, how, what, how many miles per gallon your car gets. Notice if we take the integral of that, this function is going to be strictly in miles, right? Um, this, and we take this derivative, but the derivative it would have to be in terms of gallon. This is kind of interesting. If I take the derivative again in terms of gallons, I get some function that's in miles per gallon squared. Miles per gallon, which would be a measure of um, how many gallons I'm using, the change in my fuel efficiency relative to how many gallons I've used, right? So like if I've used 10 gallons, this might change. And that might be the case for, probably is the case, um, has, might, might have something to do about efficiency of the engine or maybe weight. Um, if you've used up so much gallons, you're, you're down that amount or something like that. But anyways, thinking about this flow, um, taking the integral releases this by one, taking the derivative increases this by one, right? What are you taking it relative to? It's a good way to think about these types of things. And I want to remind you about that average value. Um, if we want the average value of a function over an interval, we can say what's the area under that function on that interval divided by the distance of that interval, right? So this is, this is our average. So this is our average. So let's say I had some function. So let's go ahead and find that. What's the average value of this function over the interval one to six? So we want to say how long that interval is relative to x. Oh, I forgot that up here, relative to x. Don't forget that. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. This is one fifth, and let's let's take this integral. This is x to the fourth. So it's this. So it's basically uh, when we go to compute this, right? It's uh, it's this whole thing. It's going to be times a fifth. And I know you'd use a calculator for it, but I just want to emphasize we plug in six. So it ends up being whatever this is, minus plug one in. And I would compute that, divide it by five, and it looks like we get something around here. All right, so uh, pretty short lecture for you today. I hope that's okay. Go ahead and give the problem set a try. Send me any questions you have, message me or post them.